So welcome everyone to our webinar series. Um, with me are Arnie uh, Howes and Nancy Kreschke. Uh, Arnie is going to be doing the presenting today. If you're new to joining us, just know we have we kind of cover content at the beginning and then open it up for Q&A. But at any point, we'd love to hear your questions. So feel free to enter them into chat. Today, we're going to be talking about how to identify continuous improvement opportunities in 365. So a little bit of a less lesser kind of a techie conversation, more of a strategy on how to leverage 365. And uh, next month, and I'll go ahead and enter into chat a bunch of uh, links for you. Uh, next month, we're going to actually be talking about Microsoft's artificial intelligence tool, Copilot. So super exciting. Um, it's going to be talking about how ChatGPT is integrated into the Microsoft suite that allows you to leverage um, your data, your content, and the power of AI. So it should be really interesting. Um, and then in December, we're actually going to do a part two session to the one today. So we <laughs> kind of uh, ended up putting one in the middle, but we know everybody's excited to know what's going on with Copilot which is supposed to be coming out, I think, in November. So we wanted to make sure we got that out on a timely basis. So in the chat, I just entered a bunch of links. Uh, you can uh, find the registration for the November webinar. You can find past recordings, sign up for our newsletter, and then you'll know about any future webinar that's coming up and other great tips. And so I'll just cover a couple things um, before Arnie takes off. So. With Microsoft 365, we don't recommend the tech just to recommend it. There's always got to be a business reason, a productivity challenge that actually is getting in the way. And so um, go ahead, Arnie, go to the next one. Yeah, Jan, there's a delay here. So sorry if I missed the slides up. I'm oh, gonna, that's okay. I'm gonna try no worries. To no worries at all. So these are typically the issues that if we're working with clients and we hear them talking about communication issues, collaboration issues, accountability issues, we know that there's something in Microsoft 365 they should be exploring. So this is usually our cue where we start recommending apps or getting them moved off the server over into the Microsoft 365 environment. And we often joke if there's back-to-back -back meetings, it's typically assigned to or overflowing email inboxes. Um, because when things are not running efficiently, if people are not communicating efficiently, everybody calls a meeting or there's a lot of uh, excess communication happening in email. Most companies still are a little bit of a hybrid work environment. We have some that are full office, but we also have a ton of clients that have a lot of people that just always are in the field with field work. And so one thing to know is for sure, getting your data over in the cloud, getting um, up on 365 so you can use all the apps and everything on your phone. It's kind of a no brainer thing to do so people can be productive no matter where they're located. So I'll do one case study. We're talking about a case study with Wealth Progression Group today. Um, and so basically it was a typical challenge of a CEO working too much in the business versus <clears throat> working on the business. And they'd hired a number of uh, resources to join the team because they were growing rapidly. Um, but unfortunately, balls were dropping and they just needed better processes and tools. So that was the original challenge that we identified so I was brought in to actually do one-on-one -on -one coaching with the CEO of the company. We increased her personal productivity through things like teaching her how to effectively run meetings, effective delegation, and teaching her some of the Microsoft 365 apps she could use for personal productivity. But while working with her, it became very apparent there was a lot of time waste because of the amount of time she was spending coordinating with her team. And so we opportun saw opportunities to increase uh, team productivity. So the challenges they were having is a lot of their internal discussions okay. were being lost in That's email us. and yes. okay. they couldn't, oh yes, and they couldn't access data easily when they were out of the office. So they had to VPN and to get to their data, et cetera. Um, and managing customer activity in particular was really time consuming. And that's where the CEO was spending a lot of time with her team. So we always recommend clients look at existing software. And so um, we you know, evaluated their current CRM and it was actually a really good CRM. It was top of the line for their particular industry, but it had some limitations. So they couldn't really see like a bird's eye view of what was going on with all the customer activities. Uh, due dates would pass and they'd get lost. There was no clarity of how long a project had been stuck and they just really couldn't spot issues basically. So lots of limitations on transparency of what's going on with the business. 
Um, the CRM also had workflows, but they just didn't work very well. They were really co more complicated. They need to be, they were hard to set up. It was hard to pull the information and all in all the team just found the whole process really frustrating. So whenever we hear stress, that also gets our attention. So the solution was get them over onto Microsoft Teams, get them away from using email for internal communication, move their data over into SharePoint, get this set up in the Microsoft Teams environment properly, and then build out a, uh, a SharePoint solution that would be a supplement to the CRM. It was not to replace the CRM, but basically to fill the void where the CRM was not sufficiently meeting their needs. And so the end result, great news, is internal discussions much more efficient. Balls weren't dropping between players. Uh, they could easily access anything from any mobile device anywhere, because now that everything was over in the 365 environment, and they had this now centralized portal for the way of managing their business within the 365 world. And their words, SharePoint solution was a game changer. So nice job, Arnie, as usual, building out an awesome application for the client and they could quickly get status updates. And the CEO at this point now had full confidence in the team and didn't feel the need to micromanage tasks and activities because she could quickly check status, see that everything was working fine. And they had definitely a much better vision of moving pieces and parts. They could filter data so they could batch work, so they could group all different transactions that they wanted to and then work on that sort of activity. And um, it really could do a lot of work with just one click of their SharePoint solution. Um, also notes would actually move along with status. There was improved accuracy and basically just overall happiness. <laughs> so the stress went away and the happiness came in, which again, makes us super happy with what we do. Um, we always like to track a hard number. So there's a lot of intangible benefits, but we like to come up with at least one calculated tangible benefit. So the overall cost of working with this client, this included my coaching, the team's work and the SharePoint work was just a little bit over $10,000. The good news about anything we do in building out applications in Microsoft 365 is there's no ongoing subscription fee. It's one of the reasons a lot of clients are jumping ship from third party applications and having us build out applications or set up the workflow within 365 because you're already paying for it. So why not use it? And the calculated ROI we came up with is there were three people on the team and they were saving each 10 hours a week. Um, with this improved tool and improved Teams environment. And so basically they're saving three quarters of a person, a full-time equivalent for the year. So pretty good ROI on that one. So we're excited you're here to learn more about what's possible with Microsoft and how do we can not only improve your productivity, but reduce your stress. So Arnie, I think you're up. Okay. Well, hi everybody. Um, I'm in a new location. Sorry for the poor lighting. Number one rule of giving webinars or presentations online is get a uh, one of those circle lights or <laughs> you look this very is, mysterious today, Arnie. Yeah, I'm just glad the single lights not below because it could be one of those old horror movies or something. So <laughs> sorry that I look so dark and and I'm actually really good looking in person, but I just would never know it. <laughs> So, and also another apology, this slideshow Jan brought it to my attention, but I already knew it. It is text heavy. I can't stand text heavy presentations. You need more pictures and all that, but here's how it came about. We, I, uh, I built the presentation and had lots of good pictures and stuff, but then about two days ago, I thought this really should be two presentations because, um, it just needs split up. It's just, it's too much for one webinar. So I did split it up. Most of the pictures went with the other one. So uh, it's a lot of bullet points in this one. Sorry for that. But at the end of each slide, when I have all the bullet points on there, I'll, I'll try to remember to pause so that I think they're good enough. You'll want to maybe take a screenshot uh, so that when you want to remember all of it later, you don't have to watch the whole video in my terrible lighting. So Arnie, anyway. you, cut, you cut out really quick. So what Arnie said is you might at the end of each slide take a screenshot or just pick your phone up and take a picture. I, you there, cut out for some reason on that word, Arnie. There you go. Yeah, I think Zoom is struggling today because I've noticed other people having audio issues. And when I would click to advance the slides, it was doing something weird. So hopefully we'll, we'll get through it. So anyway, let, let's have at this. Oh, and another thing too, most of our webinars in the past and, and any that I've ever done are tech heavy. There's lots of screenshots and all. So another reason why there's a lot of text in this one. But 
Um, this time, rather than so much showing how to do something, we're going to focus a little bit more on the softer skills and analyzing your business. I, mean, so, I like this. I like this topic too, because often that's what people they'll hear a lot about 365 and they'll be like, well, where do I start? Right. Or it's, I'm, I'm excited. We're doing this series to get people to wrap their head around. Like, how do I take into account all the options and where do I actually prioritize? That's perfect, Jan. That's in my notes. So you're, you're <laughs> we're on the same page. Uh, yeah. One of the questions we always get, and, and you can just count on it with a, a new client is, 365 could do so much. Where in the world do I start? Well, there's two steps in that. And you'll see it on this little diagram. Um, when I think of improving business processes with 365, you know, we're not doing it because the technology is cool. I don't want to focus on the technology. We need to focus on business processes because uh, why so many companies fail to leverage 365 is and we were just talking about it before this webinar started, Nancy, Jan, and I, is too many times, whether small business or large business, and especially the large businesses, they throw this software at their MSP or IT department, puts it on your computers, they give you this awesome training, and we can certainly do that training. Nancy is an awesome trainer. If you need it, give us a call. Nancy will help you out. But the problem is, if you only do the training, people go back to their offices and they're completely overwhelmed. And one of the key things that makes it fail in organizations, no matter the size, is the manager of the business, the owner of the business, the CEO, whoever, they don't see the what's in it for me. They're there to do a good job running a business, help the bottom line, all that stuff. They see all this cool technology in the bells and whistles. They, it just goes over their head. They're overwhelmed. It goes nowhere. And then you're paying for 365 and not using it. So I'll get off my soapbox and carry on. That was totally off script. So uh, in this process, you see in the improved step is actually the third step. You wanna start with brainstorm, then prioritize, then improve. Most of our webinars are on the improved part because let's face it, that's what most people want to see. They wanna see how do I use this 365? But really the whole process, and I do this with all of my new clients, is we brainstorm. We want to focus on the business, not the technology. So the first step in improving with 365 is to brainstorm as many possible, not solutions, uh, brainstorm the processes that 365 could help. And I'm going to tell you how to go about that here shortly. But then a second step is to uh, prioritize because all the questions I'm going to give you, all the places I tell you to look for opportunities, you're going to come up, I hope, with a huge list. I, I'm saying if you have fewer than 20 items, you're not looking hard enough. So you come up with a long list and then you want to run the right thing. So you've got to prioritize. That's where I split this up at. I said today, we're only going to talk about brainstorming. Um, Unfortunately, it's got to wait till December to do the prioritization. I'm going to show a really cool way to prioritize and make sure you do the right things first. But Rafe is going to, I think Rafe's doing it. The, yep. the uh, next month of AI, we did not want to put that off. So I split this up. Rafe's already scheduled. So part two has to wait till December. <laughs> if you want to know more or you come up with your list and you just can't wait till December because you're chomping it to bit, just call. I'll help you prioritize and... <laughs> That's kind of my um, making up for putting part two off two months. So brainstorming. There are many ways to brainstorm your list of potential improvement ideas, and I want a really long list. So I'm going to tell you where to look and what to do, what questions to ask. So here's starting the text. Again, I apologize. Don't have a lot of cool pictures, but I'm going to list some bullet points. And at the end, stop and let you take a screenshot. So the first question is, where is their frustration? You know, in this day and age, we, we all, all companies, no matter what size, have a lot of people working with information and collaborating. You want to listen closely. You want to listen for frustration. I'd even go as far as to say, roam the halls, beg people to complain. People love to complain, unfortunately. <laughs> Be careful what you wish Just, for, Arnie. Yeah, just, just tell them what, what frustrates you about how our company's organization is organized and how you work with it. What, what frustrates you? 
where are errors happening? Um, you know, errors have a way of rearing their ugly head and getting a lot of people's attention, especially the important ones. We want the important ones especially, but listen for the not so important errors. Errors are errors and we, we can engineer a lot of those out quite easily with 365. What do employees consider busy work? Um, nobody likes doing busy work. I despise busy work. There's a good chance if it's busy work on a computer or in collaboration, get that on your list. There, there's probably a chance that could be improved. Where is there duplication? Another pet peeve of mine is information having to be entered in more than one place, more than one application. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Oh, uh, yeah, SharePoint can... SharePoint teams, all of that stuff. And I got a cool little quote I came up with last week in a later slide, but SharePoint teams, et cetera, can eliminate a lot of duplication. When is information not available to those who need it? And I'm aiming at this at, I, and for some reason, HVAC repair and service companies always come to mind. Pest control, where, where you have field employees too many times, or if you're in a single location, and there are people out on the plant floor, the shop floor, and they're filling out forms, checklists, calling the office, whatever. Um, 365 gives you ways to improve that flow radically. And then this is kind of the same thing. When is information communicated verbally or by paper to be entered into a system? Those last two both have to do with um, those folks out on the floor who are often disconnected from technology. So uh, I'll let you take a screenshot of that because I think we're ready to move on to the next bunch of bullet points. But hey, Arnie, you, oh, yes, sorry, Annie. Yeah. No, go ahead. Question for you. So often um, we will tell our clients pay attention to time-consuming, repetitive tasks. Because whenever it's like a time-consuming repetitive, it's just ripe for automation. And, and once you automate it, again, you're going to get time back every day or every week. Would you agree that's another maybe angle to look at? Right. And, and there doesn't have to be anything wrong with those processes. Mm -hmm. um, 20 years ago, it may have been the best possible way to do this information process, but technology has changed. Mm -hmm. So even if there are no errors, no frustration, and people are just fine with it, Revisit it because, uh, like Jan said, if it's time consuming, that costs money. It takes, you know, you would rather have your people selling more product, more services, servicing the the, the people, uh, doing things that make money, M juggling information on a computer or managing your internal information. It does not make one penny. So look at those time consuming um, processes, as Jan said where to look. These are more physical or electronic places to look. Tracking spreadsheets. This is, this is one of the first places I go to find improvement opportunities. Excel has been around for a very long time. Spreadsheet applications. I'm old enough to remember, I forget the names of it, before Excel. When computers first start getting used in businesses, everybody wanted rows and columns. They wanted their data in a neat mm -hmm. format. Uh, Excel has done a bang up job for years, but if you're still using Excel for spreadsheets that are not formula heavy or maybe a lot of financial stuff and you've not moved those to lists, uh, put it in gear because that is a, a place that you can really put your processes on steroids is moving from Excel spreadsheets to SharePoint lists. And this is kind of along the same lines with spreadsheets that have multiple use or consumers of the information in those spreadsheets. Um, not just SharePoint, as if you've watched many webinars, you know, I'm, I try to fix everything seems like with SharePoint and SharePoint lists, but a lot of the other apps that Microsoft has, can can replace such spreadsheets. Um, Planner can replace any spreadsheets or ways that you track uh, tasks and such. So look at your spreadsheets, analyze all those. 
deeply nested files and folders. That is so 1980s. Well, actually, that's 19. <laughs> Arnie, you sound very judgy. <laughs> yeah, I am. That's that's so. Uh, I think of my wife watches Bewitched all the time, and Larry <laughs> Tate and Darren and all of them, and they've got their filing cabinets and folders and stuff in it. And you, when you think about it, if you're putting your files in deeply nested of folders that's not much different than the old days of pulling the filing cabinet drawer and sorting through them it's so yeah. inefficient so 365 can definitely reduce the clicks through folders repetitive emails and reports uh, if i do a lot of analysis with a, a company uh, we look over their inboxes we we look for reports that come frequently mm -hmm. again sharepoint lists one of my favorite examples of this is i once joined a new department in my old corporate days and had an awesome boss but she spent a lot of time she had a lot of people reporting to her she spent uh she expected uh, as many bosses do for information workers salaried workers and such you know every friday send me a note tell me what you accomplished this week what roadblocks you ran into whatever and those would all come in emails so you know she had maybe 10 people reporting to us 10 emails a week that came to her. And so my first idea that I came up with in my new, it wasn't a new idea. I'd done it many times before. Let's build a SharePoint list where everybody enters their information into the web form. Everybody knows how to enter a web form. And then she immediately eliminated 10 emails a week, not to mention all of the reports for the whole year could be sorted, filtered, mm. grouped. And when it came time to do year-end evaluations, mm -hmm. whatever. She could do keyword searches by category. She could sort the reports from one person and quickly remember how that person did the whole year. Field employee information needs, so I beat that one to death. But by the way, Microsoft has in the last three to four years made a huge push to include, they can sell more stuff is why they're doing it. But also <laughs> there's, a, there, there's a big need there for these folks roaming the fields in the shop floor. So mobile, uh, the the I forget what they call them, first line or front line workers. Mm -hmm. They've raised the prices. It used to be like two and a half dollars a month. That's that. It's worth so much more. I think now it's five or six bucks. It's still a bargain. Look into it if you have field workers. Employee onboarding and education. Last month did a whole webinar on that. So I won't dig into that. You could go watch that webinar. But that's that's always ripe for improvement and as we said earlier important or poorly performing information collaboration processes i'll pause a minute while you take a screenshot because i know you're all going to start building your long lists as soon as this is over Arnie, these are great very helpful so is it making up for all the text i you're keeping have, it entertaining when you I say you're handsome. Like, when you say you're handsome and the audience giggles, that's fun. <laughs> Did they giggle? I was, I was hoping to giggle. I might take them serious. Okay, I'm gonna wrap it up here um, with a cup with a couple pro tips. So if you happen to be uh, on site, you're not a uh, well. I guess if you're hybrid, you could remote be a little more difficult but get out there and observe the work there was a big management fad boots on the ground toyota did it and it's a good idea get out there and see the work going on so get out there and actually watch employees working on their computers i could learn so much even if i knew nothing about a uh, i came out of the electric utility industry i would go to a new power plant or or a different headquarters I, I might know nothing about their processes, but if I would go watch set by an office employee, it could be a senior executive, it could be a entry level uh, data entry person, but I would just go watch. I would, believe it or not, keep my mouth shut and just watch. And if I saw too many clicks, struggling to find things, too much navigation, hear them complaining or being frustrated, I put it on the list. You can find out so much by just watching. Here's one of my new slogans. Aggregation is better than navigation. Um, SharePoint and Teams especially can bring things together. It can aggregate disparate, disparate 
you can pronounce it either way, but it can bring information in from different locations that may be totally dissimilar and put them on a single page mm -hmm. or and make it one click away or even on the same page. So you can eliminate so many clicks and the employees will love it. it goes back to that what's in it for me. Hey, employees, end users, go with us on this change because you hate clicking through all that stuff anyway and navigating. We're going to put it on a single page for you. You can spend more time drinking coffee or whatever uh, selling or whatever you'd rather do. Staff meetings. Uh, it was, I had a, I had a cool job in a corporate world. Why did I leave it? That's a long story, but I have, <laughs> I have free reign. I could just go to any power plant. Um, the ones in Florida were great in the winter. I would, I would go and sit in on their staff meetings and, uh, it's not hard to just sit quietly in the shadows in the back of the room away from the table and just listen for frustrations. All the things I said earlier, mm -hmm. just observe and listen. And then immediately after I would go to the plant manager, the VP or whoever, tell them what I saw, suggest a couple fixes. And, and they were almost always grateful because it's frustrating. They want to fix it and they did not even know 365 to fix it. Let's see, this next one's going to be a surprise for me because it was a late addition. Oh, create a 365 improvement suggestions SharePoint list. Mm -hmm. When I start working with a new client on uh, especially learning SharePoint, this is a really simple list to build where you can learn how to do SharePoint lists, which is a powerful skill, but it's like a suggestion box. Mm -hmm. you make sure that it is available on out your intranet, put it into Teams, whatever, because once employees start seeing how much frustration and work 365 can save them, they're going to come up with their own ideas as they learn what can be done. Uh, give them a place to stash that. And plus, when you as the leader of the continuous improvement, when you come up with an idea, you stash it there. And then I don't think... No, I did not include it here. I should have put the process graphic back up because if you remember that little circle I showed, it doesn't stop at the third step of improvement. That arrow keeps going. You wrap back around to brainstorming because the technology is always improving. Your work is always changing. Conditions are changing. So you're going to have new ideas. And then when you add new ideas to the list, prioritize again and just keep going. That's why they call it continuous improvement improvement. Arnie, okay, I'm I love the, oh, I keep cutting you off. I'm so sorry. That's all right. Well, I don't quit talking. You have to. <laughs> so the last bullet point is awesome because I think, I think it's through Lean Six Sigma Kaizen events. They always say like the people in the field, the, the people that are actually doing the work really are the ones that know where there's waste. And so that's a great way for them to have an opportunity to say, hey, I spend this much time on this process because management often doesn't really get it, right? They don't see the waste. So it's a great way no. to get kind of the field and the, can, the people who are doing the day-to-day -day work to suggest areas. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and that this, I have a cycle that I go through with clients generally, and I had this in the corporate world, which was the leader of the work group, the person who can make the decisions and the people that work for him or her, but especially the managers who have probably the most to lose or gain on based on how efficient the work group is. I, I would get all excited and passionate and sell them on Teams, SharePoint, SharePoint lists and all. It's still kind of theory to them, but once they see a process put on steroids and, and radically improved, uh, most of the time it was SharePoint, now it clicks with them. They understand how this SharePoint thing works, how's it, how this Teams thing works. And so suddenly they're, they're excited and they want to, fix everything and so at that point I go from being a salesman for this stuff to having to pull hard on the reins and say whoa you're going to overwhelm people you're going to change too much too fast let's put those into a list and then prioritize them and knock them out one at a time at a reasonable pace so yeah if you do this uh, at your workplace uh, just know that if you improve things for employees this suggestions list is 
It's going to be necessary. Love it. it. Awesome. Nice job, Arnie. So let me go ahead. I just have a couple slides to wrap up. And if you already have questions, feel free to start entering in the chat. I just have a couple slides I'm going to go through. So a lot of people stumble upon our webinars and are like, who are these people and what, what do they do with 365? So ultimately, we really help companies understand how to leverage 365 to solve productivity issues, to solve business issues, really think about how do we apply the software to solve the issues. Um, this is our typical roadmap um, to help with adoption as we come in and often we'll peek under the hood, make sure things are set up properly, help migrate email data over optimize phase is where we spend a lot of time looking for what all the stuff Arnie's saying, like what are your issues and challenges and how do we leverage the software to solve that? And then our intention is always to wrap up and train your power users, your IT group to be able to maintain uh, the environment. Um, I think our secret sauce is in this sort of cycle of life. Um, we had a great conversation before you all joined about how past training and even current training is not always effective because often companies will come in and, and just train people and all the bells and whistles on a particular piece of software and you just can't do it. We're just overloaded with information. People need to really understand how it's going to apply to their workflow. They need to see some benefit to them. What we always say is what's in it for me. Um, and so one of the things we always recommend to companies is you really need kind of a pilot group um, to be experimenting with the various apps and figuring out how your company is actually going to use the apps. Uh, because there's a hundred ways to do everything in Microsoft. And we call that rules of engagement. So what's the operations manual or the way your company is going to use the software? And at that point, then it would make sense to train end users and explain not just the bells and whistles, but this is how you're going to use the bell and whistles in your day-to-day -day workflow. So, and then um, training, Nancy's awesome trainer for us. Well, Arnie, you do an awesome job too. Training, we often recommend not just group training, but one-on-one -on -one training. There's a lot of people who are kinesthetic learners. They need to be doing more hands-on. They can't learn in a group setting. Um, or they just need a little bit more hand-holding maybe than the other people in the room. And so uh, anyway, this is kind of our secret sauce for full adoption of the software. And again, our webinar next month, I'm going to enter everything into the chat one more time, is um, on Microsoft's artificial intelligence tool, Copilot. And it really is, it's leveraging the power of chat GPT. An example is you could actually come in and... Um, and through the Microsoft 365 apps, like request, um, you know, pull up our financial data the last three years, summarize this information, create an Excel pivot table with these fields. And ChatGPT is going to do all that. It, plus, it's going to leverage your data. It's going to pull out of SharePoint or wherever within your Microsoft 365 world. That person requesting that demand doesn't need to know how to create a pivot table because AI will do it for them. So you can actually start bringing in lower skilled resources to leverage the tech. But the difference between the Copilot and just generic ChatGPT is it's really embedded within the 365 world. It's also going to increase um, search exponentially on being able to use it. So we'll learn more next month um, when we hear about that. So perfect. Um, so let's go ahead and open up for Q&A. And there may not be questions here, but does anybody have a question about what Arnie brought up or anything with 365 is fine. Jan, there is one in the chat from Gabriella that says, do you help companies migrate from Google Workspaces to 365? Oh yeah, thanks Gabriella. Yes, we definitely do. Um, we do a lot with the migrating off Google, off, yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> and ironically, we sort of, um, I sort of cringe a little bit that we still use Zoom for our webinars, but we we joke that um, a lot of our clients aren't on 365 yet, and we don't want to create like a block. So we stay using Zoom for our Microsoft 365 webinars because a lot of our clients are on, on uh, Google still and using Zoom. So it's kind of ironic. Any other questions? I do have a question, Arnie. Oh. So you talk you talk yeah. about building a 365 improvement suggestions SharePoint list. Um, so one question is, are you having everybody go to the list and enter the information or are you creating a form for them to <clears> fill <throat> out because maybe the all the other mm -hmm. end users and front end workers do not know how to use SharePoint lists? Great question, Nancy. 
Yeah, and even if they know how to use SharePoint and SharePoint lists, I still send them directly to the form that comes with the list. When you build a SharePoint list, of course, as you know, Nancy, it builds a, it automatically builds a new item entry uh, web form. So uh, like in the, the navigation of an intranet site or in Teams, I will not send them to the list itself because chances are they're thinking, oh, I've got this great idea. They don't want to see all the other ideas that came before them. They just want to offload that from their brain and get it in front of the right people. So, yeah, when I add that to an intranet uh, navigation or other, I link straight to the new item entry form because, you know, if somebody needs to see the previous ideas, chances are they know how to use SharePoint anyway. And I, I can also put the link straight to the existing list. So, yeah, send them to the form because we're all about saving clicks. Perfect. Well, if there's no other questions, we are good to go. So, and Lori, thanks for entering in the chat. You were wondering about Zoom. <laughs> I should make sure to point that out every time. <laughs> so, um, awesome. Well, great job, Arnie. Thanks for being here everywhere, jo everyone. Join us next month for Copilot and then join us in December for part two of this particular webinar series about continuous improvement. So, have a nice have a nice week. Thanks. Bye. Well, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for attending our webinar today. My name is Jan Lehman. I'm the owner of CTC Productivity, and we've been doing these webinars for many years. And so if you want to check out some of our past webinars, you have a couple options. One is you can head over to our website, ctcproductivity.com and look underneath resources and then webinars, and you'll see all our past recordings we've been doing for the past few years. And there's also a link there then to register for the next upcoming webinar. The other option for you is head over to YouTube and um, find our CTC Productivity channel, and be sure and subscribe while you're there so you're sure not to miss any uh, other recordings that come out. And if you're curious about our Microsoft 365 services and how we can help you leverage the power of Microsoft 365, uh, feel free to check out information about that service on our ctcproductivity.com website. Just look under uh, areas of expertise and productivity consulting, and we share a little bit about how we work there. And be sure and fill out the contact page while you're there. So um, yeah, we can set up a meeting and I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. So thanks so much again, Jan Lehman with CTC Productivity. Have a great day.